On this episode of Street Rat Garage, we are here at the police impound to look at some of the newest vehicles that have ever gone through here. So these cars are here for a variety of reasons. Some of these cars were in accidents. Some of these cars were used in the commission of a crime. Some of them just didn't have a driver's license. But uh, today, there's a lot of new vehicles here. And we're gonna have a look at them real quick. So we'll start off with the accident vehicles right here. So, like I said, these vehicles were involved in a crash. That's probably 75% of the cars here were in some kind of accident. So they got crashed, they were disabled, the people could not drive them back, so the police had them brought to the impound lot. And then the insurance company has a look at, look at them and they decide, you know what, it's not worth our time to go pick these vehicles up. So let's just leave them there and let them get sold off, that way we don't have to mess with them. And then you can come here and bid on them, like say this, uh, what year is this? This is a 2000 something Chevy truck. It's been hit pretty good. This thing's junked out, but it still has a perfectly good 5.3 liter engine in it. That's, uh, that's worth some bucks right there. This one right here is a little bit newer. It has a 4.8 liter engine in it. Probably, probably still good, but it's been hit really hard, but yeah, it still looks good. If you can get these for about 500 bucks, you've got a perfectly good candidate for an LS swap. This truck right here is a 2010. It only has 120,000 miles. It doesn't have the 5.3, it just has a 4.8, but you know, has the 799 heads on it, which are worth about three, 400 bucks all by themselves, just for the heads, even if the engine was destroyed, which it doesn't appear to be, but definitely a good buy for a LS swap. If you're a Ford guy, I don't know, does this have the Coyote in it? I am not sure, but it is a 2010. I can't get the hood up, but uh, Coyote swap for, you know, probably, I don't know, $1,000, I'd say on that one. But there are all kinds of fun things here. This is a Chevy Lumina. When is the last time you have seen a Chevy Lumina anywhere on the street? This is a 1997. And look, it says it only has 82,000 miles on it. Is that true? It's dirty, it's a little dirty, but the seats are not all ripped up. The pedals are in pretty good shape. The odometer reads 82 with a zero in front. Um, this may have been somebody's grandma's car. <laughs> they drove around and then uh, broke the wheel off of. See, it just has uh, three missing studs, so that wheel came off. They probably left it sitting alongside of the road somewhere and they got impounded apparently they come and got their license plate off the back of it but this was not a uh, abandoned vehicle it doesn't have doesn't have the um, markings on the tires so no white marks here on the tires it doesn't say abandoned here on the windshield so this is a police impound vehicle it's in really good shape uh, but it's a Chevy Lumina. Well, that engine looks really good though. This is um, 3.1 liter. They usually lasted a while. It's only, you know, less than 100,000 miles on it. This ought to go for quite a while. I'm interested in this car, but it doesn't have a key, so I'm not really interested in having one made for it. So the deal is, this is a resistor key. Remember the keys that had the little chip on it? and it created a resistance for the ignition to start. You used to be able to go into the dealership, give them the VIN number, and they just cut you a key for like 20 bucks. I seriously doubt if that's the case anymore, and they may not even have those. If anybody knows, can you still get chip keys for these old, uh, these old Chevys? I have no clue. So here's one I'm interested in bidding on. It is a 2011 Charger. It has 198,000 miles on it, but it doesn't have a key in it. And uh, it used to, be, used to be a police car. Here's your antenna hole right there. Does it have a spotlight? Yep, has a spotlight hole right here. Let's see what this thing looks like on the inside. Oh, dude, it's dirty. It's nasty. They put some sort of weird console, or is this the one that came with it? Here's a, just on the police cars, I believe. I don't believe any of the civilian models. You had a shift on the on the column, they're always down here, but uh, it would clean up. 
window's been down for a while. There's a bag of somebody's stuff. I don't know about this one. If it had a key and we knew it ran, it would bid a little bit higher. But I think it runs because of this. It has this dent, and you can see it's just starting to, the rust isn't real bad, so that was only a few weeks old. So it probably runs, but was the suspension damaged on it? Kind of looks that way. I say this is a $500 car, what do you think? Let's open up the hood and see what she has in it. Uh, no, 3.6 liter, womp womp. Oh well, $500 car. This one, I don't know about this one. This one lost the wheel too, just like the, uh, the Chevy Lumina. Seems to be a thing that happens here. And they left it somewhere. This one was towed in by the city of Indianapolis as abandoned. So I imagine the wheel fell off. They just left it somewhere that probably wasn't in traffic. Then they tagged it for 72 hours and came back for it. Apparently it comes with a extra set of rims. That's the same that's on that one. So I guess you get these rims on it. It says it runs. It says it doesn't go in a gear, which probably true since it doesn't have a wheel on it. But I don't know. This would be a good starter car for somebody. Let's have a look at this. There's not much here. It is a 2022, and I'm pretty sure this was a Hellcat, judging from these bump outs. I believe this is where the wide body kit goes. If you look here, there's a charger, and this might have been, you know, a non wide body car because it doesn't have those bump outs. And you can see these holes right here are where the wide body flange would have went and bolted onto all the way around here. And that's part of the body kit on the Scat Packs or Hellcat cars or the, the flat sides, they didn't have that. So these guys were obviously at a chop shop. Now, the thing is, these cars still have a VIN number on them. Now, the messed up thing is whoever this car could have another Hellcat sitting back and that was stolen and strip all the parts off of that Hellcat, put all the parts on this Hellcat and have a clean title ready to go for this car. And then let the other one get impounded and start all over again, a continuous cycle over and over again. Now, here is one that I am interested in bidding on. It is a little bit newer. It's an 05. This is not our new, new ones, but this is an 05 Chevy, but it's been beat up a little bit on this side. So there's some room for improvement. For some reason, it's been dented here. It looks like the hood flew up and oh, it also cracked the windshield. There's money off and the glass is broke and the mirror is broke. So they uh, obviously they had a bad day when that hood flew up. Flat tire scraped up on the sides but it's an all-wheel drive. It's a Chevy Equinox. So it was brought in here on a, probably that accident. So it ought to run and drive pretty good. Now here is probably the newest vehicle I have ever seen. Uh, as of recording, this is 2024. Now this car is a 2023. It has 16,822 miles on it. Why is this car here? That's a good question. It's been damaged. It looks like it was in some sort of little fender bender and pushed in right here, but it's still in really good shape overall. And there's a couple little spots right here. The mirror has been knocked off. I don't know if from the same accident. It has some scrapes right here along the side with the mirror broken, but it's all locked up. So we're not going to be able to see inside of this one, I guess. Uh, well, look the, look the license plate. It does have current license plates on it, so that's good. So. Uh, we'll check on this one later. Here we have a minivan. I'm not much into minivans, but it's a 2012 Chrysler Town & Country. It's in all black, so it, it looks pretty good with the chrome accents. It has a decent set of rims here on it, but this would definitely make somebody a, a good uh, soccer, soccer mom or dad van if it goes for the right amount of money. I would say about, I don't know, $3,500 on on this one right here okay unfortunately we have some microphone failures because it's so cold out here so i'm gonna have to speak a little bit louder <laughs> to make up for it so this is our 2017 it is in bad shape it only has 80,000 miles on it it says it has keys and it runs but it will not go into gear 
that is messed up. Look at how dirty the interior is. This thing is filthy. Somebody absolutely did not take care of this car. I imagine that they probably didn't make very many payments on it. So, yeah. That is, that's not good. I don't know why it's here, though. It says, it doesn't say anything about being abandoned. There's no marks on the wheels. So, I imagine this is one of the deals that they were wanted or they didn't have a driver's license. Now, let's talk about Hondas for a minute. There's always a lot of Hondas here. You know why? 2012, it doesn't have keys. The ignition is broke. The back window is broken out. These cars are so easy to steal. This, this is like the back in the 80s when they had plastic steering columns. Yeah, you just break, the, break it open and turn it and you're driving away. You just have no anti-theft stuff. But they're pretty decent cars. Now we come down here. Hyundai, 2011, ignition broke. Let's see if the window's broke on this one too. Window's not broke on this one. They probably just left the doors unlocked. Let's look at the ignitions. Exact same thing. Except they really, they really tore everything off of that one. They were in a hurry. But it runs. At least this one doesn't have the window broke out of it. That's uh, let's go over here. 2017 ignition broke starts and dies probably doesn't have much gas in it exact same thing there's always hondas here this one looks like it was joy ridden a little bit see back windows broke out so break out the back window so you don't sit on glass pop the ignition and you have a honda for however long you want or until you get pulled over here we go. This is nice. BMW 2011, 140,000 miles. Doesn't have a key though. Man, that is a gamble. It is such a nice car. Not a whole lot of miles for a BMW. And it looks like it was taken care of pretty well. The interior, interior is nice in this car. Smoked in a little bit, but that's no big deal. What happened to this car? Was it abandoned? No, there's no marks on the wheels. There's no, no ABB on it. Huh, I don't know what happened, but uh, it's here and I bet you this runs. And we got trucks too. Ford F-150, I think that's an 09. Ford F-150, a 2011. Junkie Dodge, 1995. Another Ford F-150, 2004. Here's another one I think we're going to put a bid on. It's a 2010 Dodge Charger. has keys and went into gear. So it's a runner, but it's been wrecked up a little bit. So, oh, the front end is going to have to be replaced. But it's got some rust on the back. We'll see what this goes for. If we can get it for cheap, we'll get this one. And there's this one right here. This is a... 2005 Honda CRV. It's been wrecked in the front, so I might replace the panels, but this is a good tax time car. If you can pick this one up cheap, I'd say this is a good flipper. These things run forever. And it's pretty clean on the inside, so maybe we should throw a bit on this one as well. We'll see what it goes for. What about the Suburban? We bought one already, so we have parts for a Suburban. This is what year is this one? This is a 2000, but it has 287,000 miles on it. That's kind of high, but if it goes cheap enough, maybe we can get this. Let's see, it should have the 5.3 in it, I imagine. Uh, it won't open. So, yeah, there's that. <laughs> nice uh, door handles it has right here. Some are really cheaped out on that one. So, We'll see what it goes for. If it goes for 500 bucks, we'll get it. If not, we'll just pass on it. And we have one more Dodge Charger back here that I think we'll look at. This is a 2013 Dodge Charger. This one's an ex-police car right here. So 
It's got the center console in it. That has a big old piece of wood here. Oh, it's got push to start. Ooh, no key detected. Okay, well this is not a bad one. So this was probably pulled in and uh, somebody was arrested. So we'll try to put a bit in on that one. So let's go back inside. It is freezing out here. All right, we are back inside and it is auction time. The auction has just started and I'm glad to be back inside because it was so cold out there. It was so cold that the microphone batteries went dead. That's why we had some audio problems there, but hopefully it turns out okay. So it is tax season. So that means everybody and their brother is out there bidding on these cars and they have a whole wad of cash and they are willing and ready to spend it on any car. So. It might be a little bit more difficult today to try to find a good deal, but we are going to throw some bids in and see what comes of it. So let's get started. Well, the first car up that we looked at really was this uh, 1997 Chevy Lumina right here. And um, I think, uh, sell pending, sold for 400 bucks. Next on the block. I thought about bidding on that one, but I just don't have the time to mess with trying to get the keys for that car. I'm pretty sure that's going to be a good running and driving car that uh, somebody got a good deal on. It may be the only decent deal in this whole auction so far. But uh, yeah, we're moving on. We're moving on to the next car. So it's the uh, 2011 Dodge Charger, that uh, wrecked one that we looked at. It also did not have any keys, but. There's a couple of people bidding on it. And how many miles did it have on it? 198,000 miles on it. But it has no keys, and that is kind of hard, high miles. So it just sold for $600. Uh, one more that I was thinking about was this 2005 Cadillac. So it also had the wheel that fell off of it. But it does have keys. It runs, but it says it doesn't go into gear, which is not unusual because, um, yeah, it, it it's missing a wheel but it has some extra wheels with it. So I think we're gonna hit this one time just for fun at $425 and see what see what happens. Boom, we'll hit that. Nope, bid rejected. Somebody else outbid us. And with the fees, that would be 609, so I think we're done. We hit it once and it's gonna go through, let's see if it goes through at 425. So if we bid 450, it'll be 6, 609. The auction, fees are just high i don't like the auction fees so there it goes Sold. Sold. we were probably one bit away from getting one. that one so let's move on to something a little bit better i don't want to wrestle too much with the car when i get there so we're going to try to buy something that runs already or that is at least easy to load on the trailer so next up is our dodge challenger hellcat so uh just the shell i was tempted to buy this but for some reason they they're just spending a bunch of money on it the last one that went through went through for five hundred dollars this one's already up at six hundred dollars for just a shell so and it's just it's going to keep going that's a lot of money for a a car that has absolutely nothing and you're going to have to piece it back together again like i said before it seems a little shady to sell this car with a new title a nice clean title I mean, somebody could easily go back out, steal another car, put all the parts back on this one, and leave it in the condition this one's in, and then it go through the auction and just start over and over and over again. So, I, in my opinion, these should probably not have titles and just be used as race cars. But we'll see what it can. Look how high this one's going. Seriously, the last one was 500 bucks, but I don't know if it was a Hellcat or not. It might not have been a Hellcat. So we have a, just a regular Charger coming up, or what used, looks like it used to be a Charger. Maybe it was a Scat Pack or something. Um, do, they make a, do they make a Scat Pack? I don't know. Don't, don't listen to me. So this is almost $1,000 with fees. It's $1,242 already. There's a $1,000 bid, $1,322 on it. This is going. It just keeps going. 
So if you want to own a Hellcat Challenger, apparently you can buy one for under $1,500 right now, just as long as you want to put absolutely everything into it. I'm pretty sure you can get one of these cars for, what, maybe 50, 70, 70 grand. I mean, prices are starting to go down. Does it cost that much to put it back together? How much is a Hellcat engine and transmission? 20, 20 grand just with a transmission and engine? The suspension, the dash, the interior, I mean, absolutely everything. All the body panels. 1250 right now. That's sixteen hundred and ten dollars with the fees. I think we're going to uh, definitely take a pass on that one. That is insane. So there it goes. Twelve fifty. Nope, it's going through one more time, but it seems to be stuck at twelve fifty, sixteen ten with fees. Let's see if it goes through. That's like four hundred dollars, almost four hundred dollars worth of fees on that. And there she goes. Wow. Okay. Well, next up is our charger it's a 2021 charger so it did not have the wide body kit on it so I don't know 100% what it was but it's stripped out on the inside I mean this is basically exactly the same way the other one looked we'll see see it still has a VIN number attached to it, <laughs> it says no catalytic converters that is the least of your problems no keys no miles okay well See, it doesn't have the uh, the fender flares to bolt on anything to the body. So there, uh, looks like it's going to stop. So apparently, the Dodge Charger is not worth nearly the money the, uh, the Hellcat is, of course. So the one that went through, I think, last week, it was probably just a, a more of a baseline Charger as well. Probably not a Hellcat because this seems to be stopping at... 500 bucks or 475 dollars which still I'd I would not want to spend the time putting this back together unless uh unless you did like a LS swap that'd be cool do a LS swap on a on a Dodge Charger a new one so here it goes one more time up oh, somebody hit it again 500 dollars so 525 like I said that's about the base the price of the other one let's see if it goes through this time at 550 well they're gonna battle this out for a little bit so let's come back at the end okay it's winding down now hopefully six hundred and seventy five dollars eight hundred and ninety seven they hit it again and again I thought they were winding it up it's been a while since anybody okay. bid on it so 725 954 954 dollars with fees on that so we got about five almost five seconds four three two one and they hit it again amazing 983.25 with taxes on this absolutely nothing car 983.25 yeah there, there's nothing there no interior they took every nut and bolt off of this car I mean everything is gone 983 yep hit it again now it's a uh, with fees it's a thousand twelve dollars 775 I guess that the other one that went through for five hundred dollars was a was a good deal then uh, we'll have to remember that for some reason people want chargers and challengers that have been totally stripped apart and I don't want to know why they want those but pretty sure we know why it just keeps going it just keeps going my fear is uh Another, another option would be that somebody that's delinquent on their car payment would take this shell and strip their, their charger down and put all these parts on the other one and send the, their shell back to the, to the bank for repossession. That would be another shady way. 825 finally. Over $1,000. That was crazy. Let's move on to something we can buy. So next up is this little 2004 Dodge Neon. It's like that a special edition was it a SRT not SRT I don't know what it was what is this neon called again anyway we went I didn't really look at it because I went to the uh, went to the auction and it was all locked up then the hood was closed you couldn't see anything on the car but in the pictures here you can clearly see that it's uh it's all opened up 
It appears to be a stick. So uh, I don't know why people really like this car. I mean, it's it's rusty. It's a it's a neon, but I mean, I had a I had a brand new neon in 1995. It was surprisingly quick for what it was, but they rapidly deteriorated. Deteriorated, New bidder. and uh, the value went down. But for some reason, maybe it's because there's not any of them around anymore. It's got the big wing on the back and everything. I don't know. Did it come with that wing? I don't like a Subaru wing. But this little thing that nobody knows anything about is getting twelve hundred dollars. It has no keys. One hundred forty-eight thousand miles. All that we know that it has. This giant intercooler right here behind the uh, the bumper cover. So uh, there's a good chance that it has a bigger turbo on it, but it doesn't appear like there's been any other mods besides the cold air intake, which is always the uh, the go-to mod for any uh, ricer. New bidder. But I, I don't understand why is this four-door neon going for $1,350, $1,725, $1,782.50 right now for this car that nobody knows anything about. Uh, I mean, my best guess is nostalgia because this car is not quick. It's not going to be quick. Even if you put the, a little bit bigger turbo on it with no mods, it's not going to be that much quicker. It's probably going to be maybe a low 14-second car if it's been modded. So 1400 plus, you Next know, what was it, 1750 with fees? It'll be interesting. I'd like to, I'd like to see the person that bought that. I'm interested to know. All right, so next up we have this uh, 2005 Equinox that we looked at. So let's just hit it here with 650, and we're winning it for $650, and we're losing it for 675. Let's hit it at $700, and we're winning again. We are at 700, and we lost again. How about 750? Does that work for you? 750. So what you do is you just keep hitting this button, apparently, until you win. But it's like tennis, just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Ah, well, it looked like they slowed down there a little bit. Did we scare them off? So pending, it's going to go through a couple more times. Watch somebody hit it. So it's uh, 11, 11, 27, yeah, 11, 27 with fees if we win this. This is a running driving car. It just got hit a little bit, scraped a little bit up on the sides. And did we buy it? Congratulations. We just won ourselves a vehicle. Nice. Sometimes you have to be aggressive. So that's one for us. Let's see if we can get another one. So next up we have our 2012 Chrysler Town & Country. This was a pretty nice looking van. I'm not into minivans, but uh, I mean, it was a newer one. Uh, 2012. Town and Country, how many miles did it have on it? It has, oh, it just sold for $2,100. <laughs> that went fast, didn't it? Well, up after that is our Kia Soul. That's the 2012 as well. So I'm not sure what happened to the bidders on that Town and Country, but I'm thinking somebody just snuck in there and got a pretty decent deal on that. And maybe on this one too, uh, because nobody's bidding on it. It's at $1,200, $1,500, went into gear, um, what's wrong with this Kia? Yeah, I mean, you, people don't like Kias. I mean, I don't. <laughs> but, huh? Nobody's nobody is bidding on it. They bid up to twelve hundred dollars pre-bid on it. It runs and drives two hundred six thousand miles, twelve hundred dollars. Nobody put a live bid on it, so it's going to whoever put in this proxy bid. And there it goes, twelve hundred bucks. Sold. That's sold. That's not bad. Next on the block. That's weird. I'm kind of surprised. Uh, did I? Did we look at this Monte Carlo? We didn't look at this. It didn't have any keys, but I was interested in it. But yeah, cranks will not start. If it, I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna hit the button on this one. If somebody didn't just hit it at four hundred dollars, and then four twenty-five, I think I would have bid on that. But people are bidding on that. It's a Monte Carlo. I think these are going to come up to be. You know, a classic vehicle that's going to be collectible someday because you don't see many of them around anymore. And they're kind of sports car-ish. They have the Monte Carlo name. But uh, they did make a few of them with a 5.3 LS engine in it. That's the ones you want. 
I can't remember what years those were, but this one just, I'm pretty sure this one just has the V6 in it. Uh, yeah, it has the 3400 SFI injection on it. So 169,000 miles. It cranks and won't start, but I'm pretty sure that's probably a simple remedy. Uh, coils or the fuel pump is probably bad. Um, I almost guarantee you this will start. Well, 600 bucks plus, you know, Next on the block. probably like $700. I wasn't paying attention to the buyer's fees. Uh, this, <laughs> we're getting off track. This is another one we didn't look at, but this was kind of weird because if you look here on the tag, it says 584,000 kilometers. <laughs> so apparently that's uh, from Canada or something. But, uh, okay, well, let's wait for our, our next one to come up. This is a, a Lexus that has no keys, and we don't know if it runs or not. And it's getting all the money. But fine. Look at them bid on this. It's, it's an 11 RX. And they, they are killing it. <laughs> they are killing it. I can't believe I actually put a bid on this for like $500. That's all I thought it was going to go for. Uh, simply because it has no keys, you don't know how many miles are on it. But they are, they are, they are loving this car. I look at the interior. The interior is not great on it either. That interior shows me well over two hundred thousand miles right there. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the deal is on this one, but not one that I would have bought. Maybe the auction company had keys made for it, started it up, and it had a rod knock, and then decided to, oh, no, it doesn't have any keys. Somebody will pay a lot of money for that. 3150 uh, Oh, look at the auction fees on that one. That's almost $800 in auction fees. The bid is thirty-one fifty, but the auction with auction fees is $3,979 for that car that we don't know anything about. And it's getting ready to close here. Let's see if they get it real quick here. Uh, five seconds, four, three, two, one, and congratulations, you own it. I would have bought the, uh, the van. <laughs> okay, well, we have our Impala coming up. We got a lot of good cars in this auction. This is the 17 Impala that wasn't taken very good care of. It is so filthy on the inside, which is exactly what you want to look for in a car. This is a new car. It has 80,000 miles on it. A little bit high for a 17, but it's filthy. It's absolutely filthy inside. But this, the interior is not all really ripped up. I think the, that center console there had a little bit of wear on it. Replace this center console, clean up all this interior, and you have a, a really nice looking car. Didn't it have a dinner? Oh, yeah. It looks like it, the mirror was messed up on that one. It looks like it had a couple little scrapes on it, but all of this could be reconditioned easy. 4,900, uh, wow, 4,900 with uh, the bidding fees, actually, that's if we bid, I've been saying that wrong, if we bid 4950 the auction fees would be 4, 000, or 5,900. So now they're, that's at 4,000, uh, 5,900. Or four thousand nine hundred. Yeah, what am I saying? So if we bid five thousand dollars on it, the auction fees will be over a thousand dollars. So if the next person bids at five thousand dollars, they will be paying one thousand forty nine dollars. There you go. He one thousand forty nine dollars in auction fees on this car. That that is not right. <laughs> that is definitely not right. So five thousand. So if we bid five thousand one hundred, we'll be paying eleven. Uh, yeah, we'll be we'll still be paying a thousand sixty-four on the auction fees. That's crazy. That's what's preventing me from bidding on higher price cars. Are these auction fees right here? I'd pay. I think it should be capped at like you know two hundred, two hundred fifty bucks. What's wrong with that? So let's see if this goes through. Let's see if they're gonna pay five thousand dollars bid on it with you know a thousand dollars of auction fees on it so they're buying this for six thousand dollars right here and there it goes six thousand dollars okay now we are looking at our crv which um 
when I went to the auction yesterday to look at the cars, I said this would be a good uh, beginner car or a starter car or tax time car if it went for like, you know, how much did I say? Five, six, seven hundred dollars. Well, it's at thirteen fifty right now. So and nobody's gonna bid on it because it's already too high. So well, I lied. They <laughs> just bid on it, now it's at fifteen hundred. And uh that's that's almost two thousand dollars with auction fees. So yipes. They they're they're bidding. They're bidding on this little car. I can't believe I mean it's been wrecked already. It had the fender or the uh, bumper cover replaced and it had the hood replaced so it got hit right here in the front end so use and the bumper cover is unpainted and the hoods unpainted that usually means somebody just uh, slapped it back together just good enough to make it run and we don't know about the inner structure of it but right now it's selling for 1600 so that's about two thousand dollars with auction fees that that is definitely high for for this car Definitely a good thousand dollar car at best, but wow. I'm pretty sure we can go on Facebook Marketplace and find a 2005 Honda Civic. How many miles? With 212,000 miles on it for cheaper than that. So, wow, $1,800. So, 2000 what, $2,100 with auction fees? nuts okay now we have one of our uh, most stolen cars ever the Hyundai Elantra so uh, this one had 164,000 miles it was a 2017 ignition broke starts and dies so I don't know why it dies but yeah this is one that looked like they took off road and joy joy road or joy had a joy ride on it and took it off road or something and back windows broke off from where they stole it so if it's ever cold outside and you see a uh, Hyundai Elantra driving around with only one window down or out you you might want to call the police because it's probably stolen these things are so easy so easy to steal 165,000 miles on it so 2300 bucks which seems like a pretty good deal really we got another Hyundai yep here's our other Honda our, one of like three or four this is also a stolen vehicle uh, went in gear uh, ignition broke yeah so this one this one's running up a little bit these are it seems like the this would be the, the car to buy you just have to put an alarm system on it and your problems are solved because these are going cheap for Wow, this one's 11. I forgot what year the other one was already, but it was newer. It was at a 15, something like that. So we're at 14. That's 1500. That's like almost $2,000 with auction fees on it. This one didn't even have the window broken on it. I don't know what happened to this one. They left it unlocked, I guess. But this is for a get around car. This is a good deal. This is another one just people aren't paying attention to. They want something. I don't know, more sporty, I guess. But this is this is a fine car. You want to go back and forth to work and get a job or do your job, this is the car to have. All you have to do is like back in the old days when they had all those eighties cars, put an alarm on it. That's fifteen hundred bucks. That's under that's like two thousand dollars with auction fees. So what? And the the Kia Soul. I can't remember. The Kia Soul's a a highly uh, stolen vehicle as well this one has no miles no keys or anything on it but it's a 13 oh this one no it wasn't well it was wrecked at one time it has a bumper cover that's been replaced on it we don't know much about this one it does I didn't really look at this one but I don't see any marks on the tires and there is a slight dent right here so maybe it was involved in a small wreck and they never came and got the keys oh look we can see the ignition right here this was stolen so this is a this is probably a running car if you know how to do it Ooh, sold. it's sold man I Next on the block. almost hit the button on that one <laughs> just for fun but yeah, again 2012 Hyundai Sonata it's not as new as the other ones it got the broken back window in it 
it has the ignition broke and no miles on it it doesn't say it runs but you know it does run because it was stolen or for some reason they couldn't start it why does it say Kia all over it Kia that's weird and we'll look in a we'll have to look into getting one of these one day just to see what the deal is with them so this this should go under fifteen hundred dollars uh, according to the others I mean I would uh if I was bidding on this one I probably want to bid on one that was already running but I'm I almost guarantee you this one's fine just needs the ignition fix wonder how much that cost does anybody know how much it costs to fix one of these uh, Kia ignition systems when somebody breaks it out do you have to replace the whole steering column I don't know I mean it looks all plasticky inside so we're at eleven hundred dollars that's fourteen hundred dollars with uh, auction fees I call that a good deal no mile we just don't know how many miles are on it that's the only thing look at the interior and the interior is okay I'd say it's about 150 huh not bad though okay we're finally at our Dodge Charger which is already out of my price range I wanted to give about two thousand maybe a little bit over two thousand dollars with auction fees well it's already at thirty one eighty five with auction fees so it's at the biddings at twenty five hundred dollars which for this car how many miles were on it I can't remember let's see it had hundred and sixty nine that's not bad for the v6 so it's going for around three thousand dollars that's okay there was a lot of people watching it and I was pretty sure I wasn't going to get it for the two thousand dollars that I wanted to give for it but I was hoping so there's a I think there's like another one that's coming up but it's older did we look at the 2000 like the 2010 I can't remember anyway let's let's have a look okay here it is this is our 2010 uh, Dodge Charger and um, it's at fifteen hundred dollars I don't think I'm gonna bid on this one either it's already with auction fees it's already at the two thousand dollars that I wanted not to go over on the newer one and this one is in a lot worse shape how many miles were on it 157 close to the same mileage if this one was one year newer I would bid on that but Sold. let that one go prices are just too high it's the beginning of tax season and they're they're just going for too much money right now so we're not gonna waste our money on these cars during tax time that are just aren't quite worth it I'm pretty sure that kind of money two thousand dollars is good for somebody that just wants to drive the car and to fix it up and keep it for themselves but that's not what we're here for we're here to make a little money and to you know sell cars which I don't know we may have been able to get about 2500 of it 2500 dollars after we fixed it up and cleaned it but I don't think we'll get more than that three thousand dollars at the very top if we super clean it and fix all the repairs that's about it okay now we have our big suburban let's go look at it and see what it's doing I put a bid in it a pre-bid on it but that is well surpassed it I think it bid like six or seven hundred bucks on it it's already at nine hundred dollars less auction fees this one was not bad it had two hundred and eighty seven thousand miles on it so the miles are kind of high had a messed up fender the grill was goofed up and it had these weird patches on the doors but we have parts we have a parts truck for this but with two hundred eighty seven thousand miles I'm sure it still runs good but that kind of deters people from buying it not everybody knows these trucks are worth you know or last a lot longer than the mileage the LS engine is just great and you know I have over 400,000 miles on my 5.3 right now and it's just no problem so nine hundred and seventy five dollars so that's thirteen hundred bucks again this is a good vehicle for somebody who wants it for themselves and just gonna fix it up and drive it around but I don't know you I think there's still a little profit to be made even at this price but I'm not willing to uh, not willing to risk it on on this one even though we have the parts truck for it I think I would uh, I would buy this at like $700 so $1,000 
thirteen hundred about thirteen hundred bucks with auction fees. It's that's a fair price. There's nothing wrong with that price on this truck. I'm pretty sure it's it's okay. As long as the transmission's good. That's a weak point. Sold. There we go. Thirteen hundred bucks. Next on the block. I'd say goodbye. Okay, here's a little Sonoma that only one person put a bid on. Oh, two, three people, four people, five. Well, okay. That escalated rapidly. Nobody, one person put a bid on it, like at $200. It's disgusting. It doesn't have a key. I was going to bid on this if nobody else did, but apparently uh, five other bids later, that's at $500. I still think that's okay. Yeah, there goes another one. Six bidders bid on this. It's so filthy, though. It's been sitting somewhere. It doesn't have a key on it, but it's solid. only has 142, which is good for one of these trucks. It's a stick shift, with this, which is cool. Eh, I mean, even, even that's a fair price. I just don't want to... If it had a key, I'd bid on it. I don't want to deal with getting the key and uh, trying to drag this up on the trailer with a steering wheel that's probably locked. And that's the only reason I'm I'm lazy, too lazy to buy it and make money apparently, but good deal. That's a good deal right there. I'm jealous of that one. I should have been on it. Gone. Now we have that really nice looking BMW. I like this one. Again, this one did not have any keys for it, and the keys are probably you know three or four five hundred dollars. I don't know how much they are for a BMW, but it only had one hundred forty thousand miles on it. And it was not brought in for being abandoned because there's no marks or anything on the wheel. It doesn't say abandoned on the windshield. Pretty sure this is a runner. It may have been a stolen vehicle or somebody got arrested. I mean, it does have a rebuilt title on it, but that's not so bad. It looks fine. It was really clean on the inside. I like this car. And uh, 2011, right now it's at $2,200. $2,700 with auction fees, still a good deal. I bet you money that this one just starts up and drives as soon as you make a key for it. And I imagine this is one you have to have programmed all the other fun stuff. So definitely an expensive key, but add another, I don't know, allow another $500 for adding the key to it. So we're almost, we're at $2,300. So that's like three thousand dollars, thirty-five hundred dollars with a key. That's got a. That's still got to be a, a good deal that you can make some money off of. This is a really nice looking, nice looking car. BMW at one hundred and forty thousand miles is fine, no big deal. Twenty-four hundred dollars, three thousand dollars. Still had your key fee. I think it's about to close here. Let's see if it goes. It's nice. It's a nice car. $2,400, $3,000. See if it goes one more time through here, about 10 seconds, and we'll see what it goes for real quick. All right. Come on. Big money. Three, two, one, and sell pending. Sold. No, it didn't sell. Man, that gets me every time. It's got another 10 seconds on it. I, I can never get this uh, this time bar correct. Sometimes it gives you two, sometimes it gives you three runs. There we go. And it's doing it again. Unbelievable. So, here we go. We got five seconds on it at $2,400, $3,024 with auction fees. And there she goes. Sold. Sold. Okay, so that's going to do it for the inside part again. We're going to go back outside and see what we won. Okay, Let's it go. is about a week later and we have the Equinox right here. Let's have a look at it real quick. So I took it right from the auction, went and got it titled in my name. And then I went to the junkyard and bought the mirror, the door handle, and the door glass. Those are the parts that uh, were broke off of it when it, I think it slid off into a ditch or something. But uh, the door is still a little banged up. That door, especially that one has a little bit of a ding on it, no big deal. I'm contemplating whether to replace that door or not, I don't know, and that hood. But it is ready to go, it runs, it drives just fine. This side has some scratches on it, but this side over here, it looks fine. So this is our Facebook market side <laughs> picture right here. 
Now I do have a schedule to go and have the windshield replaced. That's gonna cost me $250 right there. So $250 for the windshield, 50 or $60 for these parts right there. We paid $1,100 for the car. We're gonna have about $400 into it uh, after we're all done. $1,500 for the car. So I think I will try to put it up for $2,500 to $2,800 or $2,800, let them talk me down to $2,500, somewhere in there. We wanna make about $1,000 off of this vehicle, but it should sell. It's still tax time. People are still throwing money out there right and left, and uh, this is the perfect time to sell the car. So I got about another week before the title comes in. We'll get the windshield replaced, and then it'll be up for sale. But uh, yeah, good deal we got on this one. I'm surprised we got it, but we actually got a good deal out of the auction during tax time. So we'll see what it does. And that is going to wrap it up for this episode of Street Rag Garage. Until next time.